let's talk about the sedimentary rock. So the total amount of the sedimentary rock uh, that existed on, so how did the sedimentary rocks generally develop? Let me uh, tell you a brief idea that there is some igneous rock pre-existing and it undergoes some weathering condition. Some weathering condition it undergoes. So after weathering, uh, there will be some rock fragment. There will be some rock fragment and this rock fragment will be transported and will be deposited like this, like a strata. So strata is very common here. Other things of bedding planes are uh, uh, also common here. Strata means layer. So this will be deposited layer after layer. And this is how, and under compression, this will form a sedimentary rock. This is how a sedimentary rock generally develops. That's the common concept. Now, the total amount of the sedimentary rock that exists on the upper 16 kilometer, so sedimentary rocks you will find up to 16 kilometer of depth. Okay. And this um, rock basically, sedimentary rock basically covers 5% of the earth's total rock. Okay. So, how these sedimentary rocks are formed? Sedimentary rocks are formed, two things you can consider. So, there are layer after layer deposition is there. And after deposition, you will have the consolidation. What is What do you mean by consolidation? Consolidation means the compaction. So, these things will be discussed uh, in details uh, in this class. So, this consolidation will be there, this compression, this compression will form the sedimentary rock. Another more thing will be there, that will be the cemented, the glue in between the layers. There will be a gluey glue material, adhesive material, that's the cemented material. And how this cement has formed, there are various theories regarding this, it is very unclear how these cements are generally formed. Okay. So that thing will be discussed. So um, let's start with the sedimentary rock. So shale is a sedimentary rock, and shale is uh, you can you uh, should know that shale type of rock or this type of rock basically give you a idea of petroleum exploration. It might be served as a um, petroleum trap or that's associated with the shale rock might uh, serve as a petroleum trap. So sedimentary rocks often have a distinctive layering or bedding. So different type of uh, sedimentary rock is there. So this type of rock is shale you might have found in your neighborhood also. And this uh, this is called the sandstone. You might have seen the sandstone in the right, red fort or uh, if you ever visited the Rajasthan fort. So this type of sandstone called the Vindhan sandstone. There are several uh, sandstones are there, Barakar sandstone. Barakar is the um, station, there is a name, railway station um, at the, in between Jharkhand and West Bengal. It's the last railway station of Jharkhand, uh, or, or, sorry, West Bengal, when you were entering to Jharkhand. So that Barakar sandstone is there, Bindan sandstone is there. So this Bindan sandstone is very used or uh, basically used to um, build a red fort or other type of construction. And this is the sandstone. This sandstone you have seen and this sandstone has a distinctive feature. It is a faulted. So this layer, suppose this is your marker bed and this is your marker bed. You have seen a, you are seeing a displacement here. So you will be seeing the, so you, this displacement from this bed is also observed. Okay, so this is your fault line. So sandstone generally occurred with the fault line also. And there is a limestone. Limestone is uh, generally is also a sedimentary rock. And um, so uh, limestone type of rock generally help you to form, it's, it's a form of calcium carbonate. And this limestone, you have heard of the limestone cave. So what happened limestone is basically calcium carbonate and it as a reaction property with the water. So this limestone basically originally did not limestone as LST, sandstone as SST in short form. So a, a, this limestone or this limestone has, has a reactive property with the water and this calcium carbonate generally uh, formed the calcium uh, bicarbonate, I think. Okay. And it got dissolved. So you might have heard of the limestone caves. Uh, some caves are found in the northeast, uh, sorry, in the in the south, 
India, in the southern part of the India, or in the um, I think Go Gomti River has some caves along the path. Okay. Now, so what are the uh, formation stages of sedimentary rock? It can be classified uh, in three stages. So weathering and erosion, sedimentation, and then lithification and diagenesis. First point is to be your weathering or erosion. So without during weathering and erosion, what happened? The pre-existing rock, the older rocks, and their constituent minerals disintegrate. They are form, they form basically smaller fragments or they form some angular form, and, and this fragment is called the sediments. Okay. So the pre-existing rock and their constituent minerals are broken down to produce sediments and then uh, the sediment or the smaller fragments transported or deposited in the areas accumulation by the action of water less frequently by glacier or wind action. Okay. So how this uh, weathering and erosion work after weathering, so this is the this is the sediment type. So if you find this sand uh, on the beach, the sand is your sediment. You have seen sand on the beach, and that sand will be that's called the sediment also. That is the sediment that you can say it's a marine sediment. If you found the sand in the uh, river condition, that will be your fluvial sediment. So as simple as it. And now, um, what happened here? The bigger rocks, for obvious reason, due to the specific gravity, when there is a mixture of uh, there is a turbidity or uh, turbidity motion in the water is happening, which control consists of several type of um, several sizes of rock fragments, and these rock fragments what happen? The bigger rock fragments such as gravel. I will discuss this in the texture part. What is gravel? How, how when you should say what uh, which type of rock is gravel? If the size or diameter is greater than to 56 millimeter, then it uh, should be called as a gravel. So what happened? The bigger rock fragments as a gravel settle first. Then will be the intermediate rock fragments. Intermediate size. I couldn't draw it properly. Then the finer gain size. This is how the settlements. Uh, how the settlements work. Okay, for obvious reason. Second point is your sedimentation. sedimentation part the process of accumulation of sediments at size so what happened sediment is formed you do the weathering so you found the sediment and this sediment will be transported and deposited at a place that called the sedimentation the deposition of the or the process of accumulation of sediment at a place or at a basin basin tandem structure i'm drawing here so at the process of accumulation of sediment at the site of deposition is called the sedimentation and the material uh, basically carried in the solution so how water transport uh, how i think you have read in physical geology that how uh, river water or river uh, carries the uh, uh, fragments or river carries the uh, grains so what happened there that it basically makes a solution and this solution contains all types of uh, rock fragments and this rock form is basically deposited in a basin like structure and it will be deposited as strata or like bigger will be settled down fast than the um, finer grain sediment then the uh, finest grain sediment will be there so this is the accumulation part is called sedimentation next is the, the very important point that is your lithification and diagenesis so what do you mean by lithification so this how the water carries the uh, uh, fragments the water will be depositing in one by another and that will be compaction and this compaction will eventually uh, form the sedimentary layer and in between the layer you will find the salt cluster or other cementing material which will be cementing material means the glue which basically uh, holding the two blocks together okay so lithification, the process of converting soft and loose sediment into hard and firm rocks is called the lithification. This process is also called the consolidation or the compaction. Diagenesis, this process that describes the physical and chemical changes. So die in the diagenesis process, 
the physical and chemical changes in the sediment will be there and the such changes are called the diagenetic changes and the process is called diagenesis so the diagenesis includes basically three uh, processes complex cementation and pre crystallization complex in occur a uh, complex in its diagenetic process that begins on burial and continue during burial to depths of 9 km or more so complex in increase the bulk density of a rock increase its competence and reduce porosity sand complex with a relatively little loss of porosity or permeability but other diagenetic process may considerably reduce the porosity and permeability uh, so what happened here okay so let's talk about the compression in the compression case how this the compression generally work so there is a uh, layer after layer are forming and this layer has weight and it will be putting pressure on this layer the pressure will be this layer will be less than this layer and the compression occurs when the weight of the overlying layer compresses the sediments below so as the grain of the sediments are pressed closer so what will happen if you are pressing it closer you are uh, reducing the void spaces if we, if you are making your formation tight if you are uh, taking the formation tight so the void spaces will be uh, less suppose you are pressing your shirt okay and pressing it very good way or you are just vacuum uh, the air from the shirt uh, by wrapping it in a plastic people is to do when they travel and when you are vacuuming it that means you are taking out all the air from in between the uh, shark layer or the in between the folds so that thing is also happening here when this compression is happening and i'm when i'm saying about sediments this could be 1 km thick 1 km so that will be giving enormous pressure on the under underlying layers and this will give you the compacted uh, sedimentary rock on the rock and as for compaction the porosity and the permeability will be decreased so fine grain sediments such as clays are consolidated more effectively uh, by this process than the coarse grain sediment for obvious reason because coarse grain sediment whatever uh, how much pressure you have provided and there will be a gap in between uh, on the other hand, fine grain sediment will uh, accustom themselves or arrange themselves in such a manner there will be less space. Second point is the cementation. Now, this point, this cement, uh, sometimes if you see a, a sedimentary rock, then you will see between two blocks there is a, a space and this space is filled with white kind of cement. And this cementation process, or uh, when basically the water circulates through the pore or coarse grain sediment, the dissolved mineral matter is very, uh, it's not understandable how this cementation uh, is formed, but there are some working theory that uh, when water circulates through the pore or coarse grain sediment, the dissolved mineral matter is precipitated between the grains, which cause cementation. The most common cementing materials are are generally silica, calcium carbonate. These are the cementing material. I'm talking about the cement. Um, iron oxide, Fe2O3, and clay minerals. Okay, so the identification of cementing material is a relatively simple matter. Calcite cement will affect the inverse with the dilute hydrochloric acid with the iron oxide gives a rock characteristic great so if uh, iron oxide cement is present there then it might give with the rock as a characteristic red orange or yellow silica uh, is the hardest of the cements and it produces the hardest sedimentary rock remember that so after cementing and compression, your sedimentary rock is ready. But one more thing might happen in the sedimentary rock that's found mostly in the metamorphic rock. That is, uh, in your metamorphic section, I will discuss this in details. That is the recrystallization. So, recrystallization is a process 
uh, the sedimentary rocks which are little required by the complex and cementation and your sedimentary rock is ready. This ready complex and cementation or the combination of the both, some of the consolidated chiefly by the recrystallization of the constitution. So what happened? The, uh, crystallographic structure totally changed, the mineral constitution totally changed, and new things have formed, and that's the purpose of the recrystallization. Generally happened with the metamorphic rock, but some places or some cases you will find the sedimentary rock also. There is a sedimentary rock like limestone LST or the dolomite, uh, salt and gypsum. So gypsum is your uh, anhydride or gypsum is your uh, evaporites you can say. So what happened, how gypsum are formed? So gypsum are formed when the salt, rock salt uh, is evaporated and uh, after evaporation is suppose there is a um, rock block here and after evaporation this is depositing here. And this is how a gypsum is formed. Okay, so gypsum is totally recrystallized uh, structure. See, so some of the rocks consolidated chiefly by the recrystallization of the constituents like dolomite and gypsum. So this is called the gypsum. Gypsum, see, uh, gypsum also serves as a uh, gem rock. It's a gem rock, so it has a economic importance also. Okay, so this uh, white and green color, both the colors you can object. Objection generally green color gypsum is used for your gemstone. Okay, next. Uh, so these are the processes how the sedimentary rock have formed. So now sedimentary rock can be classified basically in two types: plastic sedimentary rock and non-plastic sedimentary rock. So plastic sedimentary rocks are what are the plastic sediments? So plastic sediments are the broken fragments of the pre-existing rock. That's the regular thing we have discussed. So pre-existing rock is there. There is a rock that could be the igneous or metamorphic rock, and from that igneous or metamorphic rock. Uh, the rock fragments are dis, uh, derived and these rock fragments will be called as a plastic sedimentary rock or plastic sediments. And when these plastic sediments form plastic set, when this plastic sediment form a sedimentary rock, it's called a plastic sedimentary rock. So uh, plastic rocks are depend, formed by the mechanical accumulation. So generally you will find a mechanical accumulation, no chemical uh, uh thing is there so generally mechanical accumulation of the grains of plastic sediment and depending upon the size of the grains the plastic rocks are classified in three groups okay rudaceous erinaceous and argillaceous so first one is your rudaceous So what is rudaceous rock? These rocks formed by the bigger rocks fragment. It's the bigger rock fragments is there. Then this type of rock is called rudaceous. Example is conglomerate. Okay. And if this rock is uh, bigger rock fragments and this rock fragments is uh, circular in shape, then you will be saying it's a conglomerate and I've already talked about base here. If it's a angular rock fragment, then it can be called as brazier or breccia, whatever you want to say. So, rudaceous rock are basically bigger rock fragments. Second point would be, or second classification is the erinaceous, and this is a simple classification that here the thing will be the intermediate, intermediate rock fragments. And this type of rock fragments are basically uh, generated. Uh, the example of this type of rock is sandstone. Another thing is uh, that is the uh, argillaceous. And argillaceous, argillaceous means related to mud, related to clay. Okay. So argillaceous or argillaceous, this type of rocks are made up by very fine grain, very fine grain sediment. Uh, like it's a clay-like sediment. So clay has a uh, very less clay has the lowest uh, particle diameter or lowest size in the grain classification. I will discuss. Uh, so it's a very fine grain type of rock, and this type of uh, rock is shale. 
I have shown you already the picture and the monsoon. So that's called the argillaceous. So this is rudaceous. This is how conglomerate. So you see the mineral is again sir. Circular, almost circular in shape. Okay. For Brescia, the mineral grains are the grains are angular in shape, and in between them you will see the white cemented material is there, or it can be classified as the ground mass. Okay. Arnaceous rocks are the sandstone and a grit. So this is the quartzitic sandstone. So this is the sandstone. Um, you might have seen uh, in uh, uh, your neighborhood also, and this is the grit. Ar argillaceous or argillaceous or argillaceous rocks composed of very fine sediment. For example, is shale, a marstone or sandstone. Other than this, depending on the mineral composition, it can also be classified in two types: arcos and greywacky. This is these two types are very important. Other than sandy sandstone is there. Our uh, silty sandstone is there. Okay, so when the uh, silted part is more in the sandstone, then it will be called as a silty sandstone. So not only the single mineral or single type, there might be the various composition of sediments will also occur. Suppose silty sand. What do you mean by silty sand? So uh, it's a sand, but it has a impurities or it has a uh, some portion of the silt uh, materials or silt particles. That's why it's a silty sand. Clay sand, when the clay materials or clay particles, clay is present in a sand body, that will be the clay sand. Okay. So this is how the sediments generally classified. Among which the most important one is the arcos, where the it's a sedimentary rock, it's a sedimentary sedi uh, sandstone rock, and it's generally contain at least 25% of swales per. Okay, and grey rocky. Remember that these two are very important. A dark post grand sandstone rock which contains more than 50% of clay. Okay. Now let's talk about the non-plastic sedimentary rock. This type of sedimentary rock forms due to the chemical precipitation. So, so far we have discussed in the plastic sedimentary rock that uh, basically formed by the mechanical accumulation. This type is for your chemical precipitation. So um, chemically, it can be classified as chemically formed rock or organically formed rock. Okay. So any mass of plants body may use as a uh, or may form some sedimentary rock that is called the organically uh, formed rocks. So chemically formed, what are the chemically formed rocks? These are these rocks generally formed by the chemical precipitation of carbonate, as for example, limestone and dolomite. Salt rock formed by the evaporation of the saline rock. So I've already discussed how the salt rock and gypsum are formed. So salt rocks, principal minerals are sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. What happened here? Uh, so if there is a saline ro uh, lake here, and uh, that, that there will be uh, evaporation effect, you know that what is the evaporation? And that will be deposited somewhere or some places, not just above the lake or in the side of the. So suppose there is a hilly region near the side like this, and it may form at this portion also. So this is how rock salts are formed, and this rock salts uh, and gypsum is formed uh, and is called the salt rocks. Another thing is the ferrogenous rocks. It's a formed by the chemical precipitation of iron oxide. So it's a ferrogenous means its origin has a iron uh, iron chemical component. So ferrogenous the formed by the chemical precipitation of the iron oxide. It's called the iron stone, like this. So it's consisted of this ferrogenous uh, such rocks basically contains high proportion of iron bearing minerals such as siderite. Uh, hematite, hematite is, is the ore of the iron. You are the mineral, uh, you, you are the mining engineers, and you know that that hematite is the uh, ore of iron or chemosite or pyrite. Okay, that is called the ferrogenous material. Siliceous deposits, that is very common, and these siliceous rocks are formed when the silica is precipitated from the water. Such example is flint, chart, jasper, and agate. Jasper is also a mineral. 
Now, organically, organically formed rocks. So, what happened here? The plants or animals, uh, in order to form this organic, organically formed rock, uh, the plants or mineral has to die, or plants or minerals have to die. Okay. So, uh, the dead bodies of the plants or minerals basically form this type of rocks. So, it can be classified as two types: biochemical rocks and organic rock. So, what are the biochemical rocks? Shell limestone is the biochemical rock. So formed from the cells and the body of underwater organism shell, not S H A L E S A S H E double L. Like shell of a um, uh, shell of a oyster. So you know oyster. So you know oyster, and the shell of a oyster. I couldn't draw it. Uh, so I think you got the idea. And this shell of a oyster is basically formed by calcium carbonate, mostly. You know that. Um, so this shell of a oyster basically, or uh, the component includes the aragonite, mineral signals, and commonly includes the calcite and silica. And this type of form, so it's a limestone, but it containing several shell component. And this shell component and this type of rock is called the biochemical rock. Another thing is the organic rock formed by the organic matters. You know the coal, and you also know how because you are the mining engineers, and you know how this coal is formed. Coal formed generally the plants died over the few years under pressure and temperature. Coal is formed. Okay, so million years ago the plants has uh, uh, they have actually they died and made coal. Okay, after few years under pressure and high pressure and temperature. Next. So um, let's talk about the sedimentary texture. So sedimentary texture, a uh, texture basically I have already discussed the texture means the size, shape, and arrangement of the grains in a rock. That called the texture. And depending on the size, particular will or not or consider the organically um, formed rock or the chemically formed rock. We will consider the mechanically formed rock and this plastic sediment. That called the plastic sediments so or this plastic sedimentary particles. Or the size can be uh, classified like this: boulder. If the size is greater than 256 millimeter, then cobalt 64 to 256 millimeter, and then pebble 2 to 64 millimeter. And all these called um, so all these called these are the name of the particle, and all these called the gravel. In a word, it's a gravel. Now, sand, this is the size of the sand, and sand can be classified as very coarse, coarse, fine, uh, very fine, then silt, and clay. Clay has the clay is the particle which has a uh, particle diameter less than 1 to 56 millimeter. So, basically, boulder, gobble, babel, granule, uh, uh, basically form detrieter rock. This type of rock is conglomerate and brazier. Sand basically forms sandstone and mud or silt or clay basically form shale and mudstone or sealstone. So this is the actual classification of the sedimentary size. So greater than 4096 millimeter, that is the boulder. Greater than if the diameter greater than 256 millimeter, then it is gobble, then pebble, then granule. So these are the classes. So very coarse sand, coarse sand, medium sand, fine sand, uh, very fine sand. There is a pi scale is also there. So the, uh, this is the relative scale um, based on this uh, millimeter size one. Okay. So this is the relative scale, and according this scale, scale is also there. But you consider only this millimeter part. So sand can also be classified in this and uh, five distinct times. Then silt can be classified. Then mud is your clay. When the, the uh, diameter is less than 1 to 56 millimeter. Okay. Another type of uh, texture, uh, if I want to uh, talk about the texture of the sedimentary rock, then there is a term called sorting. These are the uh, basic terms. So, this um, sorting could be uh, happen um, haphazardly or oil sorted. So, it could be poorly sorted. Or it could be oil sorted. So, as the name suggesting, for the poorly sorted, there will be haphazard of different grain sizes will be there. Okay, 
and for also the same grain sizes will be const, uh, will be a constituent part of the sedimentary rocks it will be having the same grain sizes then it's called the well suited and the hypothetically grain sizes then will be it will be called the poorly sorted so the degree of assortment may be high in many wind deposit and so generally what happen uh due to the air action or the wind action in the desert there will be some sedimentary rock formed there and that will be the final grade sedimentary rock and that type of sedimentary rock will be well sorted okay um so and if the chemically formed rocks may contain uh, rounded concretion so what is the concretion this is the minerally formed nodules okay so other than texture now let's talk about the structure of the sedimentary rock so far we have discussed uh, the sedimentary rocks and its type and your class basically the section b means some of the portions uh, of sedimentary features along with the first part of the metamorphic topic so that will be discussed in today's class okay then we will be done with this petrology okay so uh, so far we have discussed the type we did the last topic we discussed on uh, on this sedimentary rock was sorting and today we'll be discussing several structural features of sedimentary rock okay so what are the structural features you can see in a sedimentary rock so the important structural feature of sedimentary rock are the stratification first one is the stratification second one would be the lamination okay third one would be the graded bedding and fourth one these all these structural features are very much important so you might want to put a start there so uh, and fourth one would be your uh, current bedding then ripple marks and minor structures are there fifth and sixth so let's start with the stratification so what do i understand or what a uh, general stratification means so when i'm talking about stratification that means uh it's giving you the idea or it's giving you the appearance of the sedimentary strata or layer i say parallel layer you will be saying you will be seeing the parallel layer and that's called each layer layer has another name in uh, structural geology uh, sorry in um, petrology it's called strata so that's why from there is coming stratification so all sedimentary rocks most of the cases are generally characterized by stratification and deposition of sediment uh, sediments into the layers so layer after layer generally sediment deposition happen the regular sediment deposit uh, deposition i have already discussed in your previous class that uh, sediments are uh, carrying out by water like river water and it is depositing in a basin like structure layer after layer so that layer after layer will be uh, compacted and will form a sedimentary rock from there you will get a stratification structure the thickness of the bed uh, may vary from a few centimeter to few meter so how the stratification look like so when you will be drawing the stratification structure one layer another layer so you will be seeing some horizontal uh, parallel la uh, layers okay and these are forms the general idea of forming a sedimentary rock the compaction and uh, cementation everything has been discussed so i think you got the idea how general stratifications are developed now there is a, say, another type of and this uh, beds are distinguished from each other how they you can distinguish one bed to another uh, it will be distinguished by the difference in the mineral composition variation in the grain size or texture difference in color and the variation of thickness so four parameters are there difference in mineral composition which will lead to the different grain size or textures which will lead to the different color composition because your minerals composition might be changing okay and the thickness might be varying this one is the uh, thicker one this one is the um, uh, thinner one there is another type of bedding kind of stratification but when the bedding planes thickness 
when the thickness is less than 1 centimeter it's a very thin bedding actually so when you will be seeing the thin bedding layers that will be called lamination so you will be seeing the mineral arrangement in a parallel lines like this and the thickness would be less than 1 centimeter then you will be seeing saying that this one is called lamination the bedding planes are called lamina the, uh, a lamina means it's a multiple body plane you are uh, considering so in plural form it's called lamina and uh, uh, the the structure does feature or the structural feature you were seeing the appearance of the sedimentary rock with thin bedding structure and the thin bedding portion is called the lamination it's called lamination okay and lamination is usually found in very fine grained uh, rock type and uh, like shell like clay uh, sedimentary rock we in that type of sedimentary rock you will be seeing the lamination structure like this so this structure is your lamination structure this one so this will be your lamination structure okay now another type of structure you will be seeing and one more thing you have to understand what's the basic difference between stratification and lamination so stratification when the bed's thickness is greater than one centimeter this is the one way of uh, stating the difference difference between stratification and lamination another thing is that stratification uh, 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 basically gives you the idea or it's basically refers to the successive or refers to the succession of beds layer after layer that things you will be call, calling as a stratification or stratifying structure okay stratified structure actually and Sir, for the yes Sir, layers and beds are same thing yes layers and beds are same thing layer strata bed all are same thing so this is a layer this is also a call bed and the boundary between them between two layers is called bedding plane i have already discussed last class okay, sir. so last means uh, when i was talking about the sedimentary setting okay when i was talking about the sedimentary rocks then i have already discussed about that now about the graded bedding each of the beds shows gradation in grain size from coarse below to fine above so uh, suppose uh, there is an option river got enough time to deposit and there is no turbulent kind of flow or the velocity of the uh, river water flow is very uh, very less or comparatively less than the hilly terrain then what will happen it will deposit the sediments how it will deposit what will happen if the river is flowing or keeping the rock fragments suspended first one what will happen the, it will deposit the larger types or larger grain sizes okay then it will deposit the smaller grain sizes i'm talking about in its first year let's say a uh, monsoon one i'm uh, writing this so during the monsoon period I am considering the huge amount of sedimentary loads are depositing at a basin area or at any place and initially for the monsoon one you are seeing this type of structure okay then uh, below above of which you will be seeing the finer grain sediment so there is a gradation means the gradation in size if you move from bottom to top of that layer of that portion then you will be seeing that the grain sizes decreases from uh, bottom to top if you move bottom to top then the grain sizes decreases and for the monsoon two what will happen another layer uh, of same kind will be deposited so similarly uh, the larger particle due to the density and the weight uh, it will be deposited earlier or it will be deposited at the bottom then you will be have the finer grain sediment and it's called the graded bedding it's called it's called graded bedding structure okay 
this one let me show uh, the photograph of that uh, so this is how lamina generally looks like and uh, this is the graded building structure so coarse coarser particles will be deposited at the bottom see here and it could be uh, for the monsoon one let's say this one was deposited uh, this layer was deposited and there is another layer top of it which was deposited which was kind of, uh, you can see it's a recent year comparing to the bottom layer okay so there are two layer in figure a if you can see it so here um, so this is the this is called uh, the time gap you can say but i'm not going into that right now it's called the graded bedding because the gradation you can see okay and the type of uh, sedimentary structural features you can see that is called that is called your current bedding or cross bedding so uh, current bedding in this current bedding condition what happened the minor beds or laminations lie at an angle to the plane of general stratification so in case of cross bedding as the name suggesting you will be seeing the pattern how you will be seeing the pattern so um suppose two layers are there so one is inclined in different direction the top layer and another one is inclined in different direction or at different angle okay and this type of structure is generally called as cross bedding it's called the cross bedding so how this cross bedding or current beddings are developed current beddings is uh in this structure the minor beds or laminas laminas are lying at an angle to the planes of general stratification these minor beds commonly tower actually if you can see this is the major bedding plane it's called the major bedding plane so here you can see what you can see that at this boundary at this bedding plane the uh, both both of the the continuity of the both side layers i mean the top layers and the bottom layers are abruptly terminated and due to this abruptly terminated it looks like the patterns uh, are not matching the the patterns at the bottom layer uh, is not matching with the top layer and this structure is called the cross bedding structure okay so current bedding is commonly found it's a very common for uh very common to found in a shallow water and wind deposit um, condition so in desert you might find this kind of structures so these are formed by shallow water and wind formed um, deposits this structure indicates the rapid change in the velocity and direction so it basically give you the idea of rapid change of velocity and direction of the flow of streams or wind which carrying the sediments and which is very common in desert area or in the shallow water condition okay fourth one the fourth one we will be discussing that is called that is called ripple marks and these are also common and these are uh, basically termed as the wavy undulations so due to the wavy undulations seen on a surface of a bedding plane you can say that uh, the ripple marks uh, are formed they are produced also by the shallow water condition and this structure may also be formed on the surface of deposits formed by the wind so ripple marks um, mostly you have seen in desert also and ripple marks are two types it could be uh, asymmetrical or current ripple marks or it could be symmetrical so uh, if you see the ri ripple marks like this that's the symmetrical one 
and if you see the ripple marks like this that is the asymmetrical one okay so this is how a ripple marks look like there are other minor structures like mud pack, rain prints, track, trail of animals. Like these are the rain prints. Uh, mud cracks are often found in the fine grained sedimentary uh, rock that has been exposed. Due to the drought condition, generally mud cracks are developed. And these uh, are generally developed uh, uh, after exposed to the drying. Um, under sub aerial co condition they basically formed there uh, you can see the formed of networks and all so why these mud cracks are important because people uh, study mud crack for one for agriculture purpose and paint industry basically uh, do some modeling and all kind of things to understand how mud crack can create at what temp temperature at what pressure at what moisture condition they basically study the mud crack to get an idea or to get a hold of that paint com construction so they have their technique to uh, do the modeling and all okay so mud cracks are very much important also but these are the minor structures okay So uh, just like the igneous rocks, you have to read these properties of this conglomerate to laterite. So laterite is basically the weathered rock and where this book, okay, like this. So when you will be reading conglomerate, read what is its nature. So when you will be writing in your exam, you have to put the uh, description in such a way that you have to write the nature, you have to write the mineral composition, you have to write the texture and the varieties. If I ask that the write the properties of conglomerate, then you have to put all these points and I'll be explaining it. Got it?